sounds good. <clears throat> I think she's purposefully gonna be late. <laughs> And so, you know, today we're going to focus on the video piece of this. So I just want to go back real quick just to recap. It's one single product from Genetech Security Center. It includes the access control. It also includes the video management. So we can make quick correlations, and that's truly powerful <coughs> for found an incident via video. We want to do something to the doors or vice versa. <clears throat> okay. Jake, there's just a question for you um, before we get going, just as a touch on access control. So we we talked to Salto last week after you guys um, were here. Are you familiar with Salto? So and they when they did their presentation, they you know they, they had titled that they work with you guys that you're um, that they're like a preferred lock solution or a powered lock or whatever it is with you. I, we haven't we don't have any of those in the district, but can you touch on just a little bit of that? What is that? What does that look like if we were to find a door or somewhere that needed, you know, like we need door access on it, but and that, that solution because you know it can just be kind of by itself. Um, do you know a lot about Salto? Is there? Yep. Is there? Okay. So, is that is that true? I mean, that you guys you guys work alongside of that that they they can plug into the system without trouble. Um, without trouble, that's the key element there. Sure. <laughs> so yeah. I can I, just to, just to give you like the the, the real meat of it. <clears throat> there's you know essentially three ways that we can do an integration to a product, and our preferred method, like we do with Asa Oblo, is to take their hardware and enroll it directly to Security Center. Sure. Then we have full control over that hardware, and we do a lot with people's hardware that their companies don't, like Asa Oblo, their Persona software doesn't do nearly as much as our software does when you roll their hardware into our software. Sure. Um, so the other way to do it too um, is to integrate with uh, a system and their, their software. Um, and that really comes into play when they don't have the direct APIs to their hardware. And then we're at the mercy of their software. Sure. So when we connect to it, we have no control. So we're just gonna have their pass through of their capabilities on that. and. From that perspective, it's just problematic, and you've now got two systems in place for that. Right. So, you know, there are um, easier solutions. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you'd like the Salto, um, we do support it, obviously, and we have, um, we, we resell those locks, so you can purchase those through Genetech to get the reader licenses with it. Uh, absolutely. Sure. It was just something, there was a couple things that they brought up that have been challenges for us in the past, and it was a unique solution that we just haven't seen. What, know, did again, you, what did you like about it? Again, get it what, uh, the wireless, or the, the component of not having a, a wire run out there okay. that's held in the card. So the thing just has power, does its thing, you know, so like in a, in a remote area, you know, where we don't necessarily have um, a switch or a way to run power to it, yeah. you know, that we have the ability to still potentially run it up. So real quick, what, if you want to make a note, you can check out a new lock that's, um, that's coming, and it's very, I can't even, I'm not supposed to talk about it at all, but the Aperio H100. Check that thing out. It's amazing. Are you checking? Uh, no, Paris Asa Ablo. Oh, okay. That's amazing. Hear what? Exactly. See, oh, let's see. delete that. <laughs> it's quite all right. That that door handle, just what she's touching right there. It's exactly what it looks like. It's got a yeah. reader built into it. The batteries go inside the handle. Cool. Oh, yeah. That's really cool. There we go. Yeah. So that's also oh boy, right? Cool. Gives you wireless options. There's a lot of wireless options and PoE options, and those a lot of those have the ability, to, like if you have a, a completely glass door, they have options for that. Cool. They're all very kind of unique door situations. So again, for those types of, sure. Um, call that out. Like like, and we talked about that too on the fence. We think Asa Ablo is going to be the only one that can supply a lock that can, can go on that fence in and in okay. and out. No, that's and that's great. Like I said, it, it's certainly not a widespread mm -hmm. thing at all, you know. But just a onesie twosie here or there, mm -hmm. where it might be a solution that we just haven't haven't seen. Sure. So yeah. I don't want to take away from those though. So we can go. And I can send you more models there too. That will be. That's fine. I can. I can. I'll do my work. It's fine. Okay. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. You can just stop having text me. It's fine. No. It's she responded to me. <laughs> do without you. I, I know my place. <laughs> Okay, so just, just <laughs> recapping here, we got one software product from Genetech. It does everything, including the access control and the and video. And then we'll decide that into other systems and roll directly, preferably like the intrusion panels that we can control or using the access control as the intrusion instead. 
third party plugins are going to come into play big time for you guys but just know we've got an open architecture as we want to layer things in you'll have the ability you know i really like gunshot uh, or gun gun detection from evolve uh, there's another company called Centegix that does a little wear around panic buttons that all the teachers can wear. Um, I like that quite a bit. Um, the different analytics that can go in. Um, there's two companies that we, I really like. One is Ventra, one is Iron Yoon, and they provide a wide array of analytics that you can, you know, it can detect, it can see and detect a gun no matter what kind it is, but it can also do a lot of other things. It can just look for just anomalies to say this is something I've never seen before maybe you should look at it and it goes very detailed in the fact that you can do a DIY uh, analytic so two two weeks of letting the camera learn it you take that video send it to the corporation they come back with your custom made analytic it's really cool okay. so today we're going to focus on Omnicast that is a brand name of our video management system within the unified <coughs> uh, platform of security center easy to use interface pop-up you know, it's uh, um, standard features, but with the map, we're gonna get um, an intuitive, easy to understand layout of where these cameras are all located. Um, so from a single map, uh, we can create a larger map that will be of the district. And then when you click on either any of the schools, we'll get a, a map that comes up for that school. If we need to segment it off to, to like the gym, the cafeteria and, and such, that's a possibility as well. We can get as creative as deep and put as many layers into the map as we like. We can also integrate it with uh, open GIS systems like Bing or Google or if you happen to be running Esri here in the district we can use that and become a layer within your Esri map. And so that's just kind of what this looks like if we're looking at the GIS points. Any questions on that the mapping piece of it before I move on? That makes sense. It's a bit time consuming to set this up to really fine tune it, but the overall setting it up is very easy. You know, we're taking a JPEG or a PDF or Google, and then we just drag and drop our cameras on the map, drag and drop our doors. If we want to put a push button, it's going to trigger a hot action or a fire an input or output within our system. We can do that full control. It's very easy to set up. It's just a little bit more time consuming because you kind of once you get into it, you, you'll find how distracted you can become and, and engulfed. So, <clears throat> um, we mentioned also the thick client is installed, right, on a Windows PC. Uh, for um, users using uh, Safari on a Mac, they can simply use a web client. Um, we also have the ability to connect through our phones or tablets, and that's an app that you'll download off of either one of the app stores. Um, so what's cool is these licenses are unlimited. You guys are going to get site license for thick clients, web clients, and mobile apps. You can give it to as many users as you want. Know that if we scale it up that, that big and you're going to have 100 users requesting video, we need to know that ahead of schedule because we need to put a server in place that's going to process that to send it all out. The software's capable, we just need to make sure we have the hardware in place that's going to sustain whatever that worst case scenario is going to look like for you guys. Um, so, the you know, you can view live and recorded video right from that app. Because it's a unified platform, you've also got your doors right in there so you can just unlock a door if you wanted to. You can then convert that phone camera into a, a mobile IP camera. So when you click record, it then streams that video off of the, that person's phone to the servers here in the schools. So it's protected, it's on the security system, you know, it can be shared and used for investigations. It's part of your system, it's not on their phones. Um, and additionally, the, uh, the cameras can be controlled via PTZ, but we can also trigger the threat level management, aka lockdowns or whatever our different kind of events are that's taking place we can trigger from the phone as well very handy because you know you're not in front of a computer when something's happening and you're running right you know hopefully have your phone but again if the if everyone has a strategic type of badges around their necks they can also be generating this emergency alert that's going to trigger that that threat level management or sensors you know gunshot sensor goes off it's going to trigger it and that's just the worst case example that I, I'm, I'm using. I hope I'm not offending anyone. 
Okay, now we talked about sepalia and the intercoms and how that applies to the doors, um, but it also applies to the video too. So a lot of those intercom devices will come with the cameras built in so we can choose to record that video or not, and we can choose to record that audio or not. So we've got full control there. Um, oh, and additionally, that camera could read a QR code too for the access control if need be. So I don't know if there's much more we want to cover on the audio side. Do you guys have any questions or concerns? Or you good, huh? Okay. Uh, the 8207, A8207, that's the model from Axis that allows you to read that QR code. Okay, intercom applications, we got that. Um, I'm actually going to skip this so we can just go right into the, uh, the demo from Ryan here. Freedom to choose a hardware because it's open architecture and then um, brief cam here just gives a, an example of one of our in integrations that would allow you to do a synopsis but it's just one integration out of 4700 that we have just to, to illustrate what integrations can look like within our software um, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna um, belabor that too much um, if ever we need to move devices it's very simple we're gonna simply drag and drop those and, and give them a new assignment of where they're going to um, we can always look at all of the hardware, what's on our system from the hardware inventory task. Um, again, just to see its properties of, of every device that's in the network. This can be exported um, at any time. It can be run. Um, and <clears throat> there's a copy configuration utility that once we enroll one camera, we can just say, okay, take all these settings and copy them over to all of these cameras. Um, it's really handy too when you go, oh, you know what? We weren't supposed to set these for to 20 frames. They're supposed to be at 15 frames. So let's go back and change all those 100 cameras. Again, it makes it very easy just to change one, copy that to all of the other cameras. The alarm management will be centralized um, through that one uh, single UI. So we're gonna force the alarms to operators even if they're watching something else, we're gonna take control and show them this is a lot more priority than, than what's going on currently, uh, grab their attention. This can also be sent to the mobile apps as well. Um, but along with that alarm management, we're able to display um, procedures that are gonna tell everybody, here's what's causing this alarm, and here's what you need to do to resolve the alarm. And that simply looks like this. So, a centralized alarm management, everything's gonna come back to uh, that main directory and whoever's logged into it then and is assigned to receive these alerts will receive them. Um, this can go so far as the Federation too, which I just touched here on in a couple slides, but it allows you to then propagate these alarms out to the local authorities, whoever might be given a certain circumstance. And so it's just a little coordination, you know, a meeting with local law enforcement, let's, Let's hash out this plan and what are these different um, actions or events that are taking place? What do we do? What's the best course of action for all of these? And again, that's an as a service uh, offering. So the police or 911 do not need to be running uh, a Genetech system in order for them to connect in and see your system, but it also gives you the um, ability to manage it. So they're, they're only gonna access it when you say they have the permission to. Oops, events to actions, very easy to set up. Anything that's in our system, we call an entity. If that's a camera, a door, uh, an input, whatever it might be. Those entities, when there's a certain event that occurs on them, then we can execute any of our out of the box actions. One of those being an execute macro, so we can, we can customize it really to anything. But there's a, a ton of out of the box features available for us. Um, and setting up those events to actions, you're really just saying that action is going to be trigger an alarm. And then this alarm has its instruction set of what it's supposed to do. Additionally, we've kind of talked a little bit about um, creating a, a nice sock. If we want to have just a receptionist that has one monitor and that's it, it's going to be the same application for building out a 10 video, a 10 monitor video wall with you know, all really cool gadgets and whatnot for the, the sock environment. So it's really easy to do this if ever we get into that um, the method where we're gonna have multiple workstations powering video walls. 
Um, remote security desk is a utility that um, we can use to connect to all of those remote PCs to change their screen. It's really kind of like picture in picture. We're going to get their security desk within our security desk that we can remotely control. Very, very useful. It can also be used for um, supervisory processes. Uh, we call it spy mode. <laughs> But so either doing internal investigations and monitoring your internal um, you know, operators uh, or for training purposes or how do I do this? So if you log into spy mode, you're gonna watch and you have no control. If you log in from a from supervisor role, then they can see you, you can move their mouse and, and whatnot. You guys are both interacting on the, the display together. So I don't know if this has a video with it you play, but probably show it. So simple mode or video wall mode. That simple mode is that direct connection where you'll, you'll choose spy and the video wall mode you're connecting to multiple workstations. Okay. Any questions on that video wall? No. You guys think you'll use it? Probably not much. Maybe in, maybe in some spots, but I we're in trouble. So. I, yeah, I struggled with so, see a widespread use. Inglewood School Districts had one, and they, they pretty much made it for a, a central located kind of emergency okay. rollover, emergency operations. And um, so they have four monitors up, and they show 64 video feeds across that, but it's always up, and a lot of people are always walking by. So they're, when you're kind of walking by, everyone's looking at this huge wall of video feeds and just kind of seeing what's going on because they don't have anyone dedicated to it. So that was their answer. Let's build this out and we'll make it so everyone can kind of see. And if need be, we can jump in, get an alarm, and it gives the instructions that I want to do. Yeah, we've got, I mean, little tiny things set up, you know, but really it's just through, it's just a security desk, you know, and then they're, uh, they're on there and they're looking at, they've got a monitor tab up on four cameras, they're looking at an entryway or something, and they've just got that on the second monitor. So nothing, I don't think anything where we would pull up multiple cameras like that. And when you talk about PII, and, you know, we can't even have camera spaces out or anything like that for the public to see. So, mm -hmm. not a, not a. I don't think a strong need for us. Okay. Sounds good. Just outside, of the, outside of the monitoring tabs, like I said, you know, if, if we couldn't pull that off of the monitoring tabs, like you know, our high school monitor, you know, exterior, or, you know, gyms mm -hmm. or whatever the case is, but they pull that up on their own tab, you know, and, and they're fine. Yep. Sounds Seems good. to be doing the job, anyways. And, and also pay attention. We're going to show the dashboards. So the dashboards will replace monitoring. Okay. Because it's a lot more useful, and, and the layout is just more, you know, you can customize it to what's sure. user-friendly on your eyes. Then there's visual tracking. Visual tracking allows us to track a person from camera to camera to camera to camera. This can be exported into one clip, so maybe they pass in front of 20 cameras for five seconds each. When we record that as a clip and we export it and give it to somebody, they're then going to watch that in the storyboard, right? They, five seconds here and that flips to the next camera and continue watching walk and then flips to the next one just like that okay visual tracking essentially is just hyperlinks between the cameras so we'll visually as you're watching person and they pause and then they go out of this screen we'll push the, the the button that tells us to go to this next camera that they're walking into if they turn around we'll push this other button that takes us back to this this uh video and can that happen in live yep live or recorded Bit. We'll touch on that. It's very, very easy to set that up as well. Um, then dynamic stream selection is a really neat feature. So we have a lot of controls that go into the network. Um, an amazing amount of controls, whether we're choosing unicast or multicast, and we have the ability to segment that off. Um, some, some really deep level of networking tools, um, really the best in the industry when it comes to the control of these video feeds. So on a camera, we can essentially assign five different uh, qualities of the video to the cameras. Uh, a low resolution setting, a high res, a remote connection if we're using the phones, or um, a remote uh, security desk from a remote location, um, <clears throat> and, and a couple others. So we can apply to different scenarios. But the software itself will, when it's looking at a screen that's this big on a large monitor, so see, I can't fit 4K in this box, right? So I'm gonna pick that low resolution stream and send you 640 by 480, it looks normal. 
if you double click on this and take it to full screen, I'm gonna send you that 4K feed. And it does that automatically, what we call a dynamic stream selection. And it's very useful because you're not making the workstation do a lot of processing for something you're not really making use of. So it allows us to do a lot more videos on a workstation. Additionally, we can offload that um, the decoding to the graphics processing unit, that GPU and the NVIDIA graphics card. And so it'll take up all of that and as soon as it reaches maximum level on the GPU, then it'll roll over to the CPU. Again, it allows us to do about twice as many video feeds per workstation uh, than previous versions. I just kind of just talked about it more. Do you guys have any questions on that dynamic stream selection? You can set a default within Security Desk too that says always connect to that high res stream. That's what I want to see first. Or always connect to that low res stream because I'm always connecting across my home connection. And then you can manually change it and you just right click on the video feed and say connect to the high res or low stream, low, low res stream for me or you can also do it, right click and choose. Send me the high res stream for all of the cameras. Again, the GPU decoding, huge benefit. Um, when you get new workstations, if you're gonna do uh, Windows workstations, I highly recommend you get them through Genetech. Um, we've done a lot with Dell over the last two years and really fine tune these uh, servers and workstations to our specs. So when we build these, they, they come from Dell, they're Dell servers, but they're, they're completely fine tuned. Um, and so we sell them more competitively than you could buy them off of Dell.com, but they're also fine tuned for our software. So there's really no reason to go elsewhere um, for the archivers and the workstations. If you wanna run the access manager and directory in a VM, go for it, that's a pretty good solution. You'll have our failover as well as the high availability from the VMs. It's a really good good solution. So that's what this looks like. Now, Archiver failover is going to be protecting the video itself. So if that server that we're sending the video to, it fails, it's automatically gonna roll that video over to that hot standby server, okay? Um, this is part of our software. There's nothing external needed for this. We're not gonna use SQL backup utilities. We're not going to use the VMHA for our stuff. Uh, the big reason being there is our software can hang and the VMs will never know that. So if we stop writing to the database and be like, oh, okay, we're, now we're not doing anything, you wouldn't fail over in any other system. But because we're software aware, we're monitoring our software, we can then say, okay, this isn't, something's wrong, um, we're not recording anymore, send it over to that failover archiver. Again, built-in tools make it really easy uh, to set this up. It's really a 10 second process to find where you want to back up to, schedule it, and you're done. Failover directory then relates to the brains of the system. So maybe we put an archiver in each school, but we're only gonna have one directory, and this can go into the VM. If that directory goes down, it's really not that big of a deal because the cloud links are in place, all our doors work, the cameras know who, which server they're sending their video to, so it continues to record video. But users cannot log in and authenticate to anything to say, I'm allowed to see this video, because that directory's down. So in that case, we have the failover directory in place, the copy of that uh, database for the brains of the system, and then no one really even knows. We, we give you a little kind of color indication so you can tell visually something's happening on the back end, but. With, without skipping a beat, the system just stays up and running for you. Um, so again, this is a utility that's built into our software, it makes it nice and easy to do, fail over um, automatically, and then we can either fail back or just leave them in that same mode. It takes care of itself and we'll just define how what's our preference. Um, any questions on the failover piece of it? It's after lunch part. <laughs> oh, I was sleeping. I know. Um, <laughs> lively group. <laughs> yeah. um, is there multicast on our network now? Yes. Okay. Are all the, is everything enrolled in the multicast? Majority of it. 
Okay. <laughs> That's huge. Okay. I didn't really know that. That's really good. So I won't jump on this too much, but I'll just show you the multicast piece of it. If we do multicast by archivers, which is a full possibility, then it controls the um, con uh, changing it from unicast to multicast. Uh, but we can also change that to each camera so that the cameras are set in a multicast stream directly as well. Why is there a lot of buttons on this? We get to you and multicast, come on. From the camera, there we go, everything multicast. And this is beautiful because if you have one camera stream that 20 people want to look at, a multicast, it's going to be one stream on the network. On unicast, it'll be 20 streams. So it's really a very good way to control that network traffic as well. <coughs> I'd love to hear that you guys are running multicast. Now, the only other piece of this too is doing edge recording. If you wanted to put an SD card in the cameras, if it loses its connectivity to its archiver, the camera, as long as it has power still, can record locally to that SD card. And then when it comes back online, it'll pick that buffer video, send it back off to the server. Can it be configured to only record when it doesn't have a connection to the archiver? Yes. Okay. And then once it sends what it kind of buffered, if you will. Does it erase from the SD card or does it sit on the SD card? Hmm. I don't know. I that. think it just overwrites. I think it just starts to overwrite. Does it, does it just take a, a transfer then? Does it copy, I mean, a cut and paste instead yeah. of a copy paste? Okay. <laughs> Part of that is really around kind of policy and compliance. Yeah. Where That's a good point. <laughs> we say we don't keep footage for more than a certain amount of time, but if it happened to be during the time that we caught on that card, and it's sitting out on that card, but then we've told someone that we don't have footage that we actually have, like, puts us in a really weird spot. And so, you know, in general, we have a 10 day minimum, but we like to keep three weeks. Um, but right now we're set to overwrite at three weeks. But if this stuff got, caught on an SD card six months ago and is still sitting there because we haven't had another network outage. Okay. That's interesting. That is interesting. I bet you we can set an expiration for it though. Just like just like you're controlling it with that automatic cleanup. Yeah. I bet you we could do that to it. I'm gonna make a note of that. That yeah, because that's that's a good question. Because if it if it offloads it, you know, once the connection's restored. Yeah. And it sends that video back, and then the next time that it loses connection, it starts again at the beginning. There would still be a time you'd have you'd have a certain amount that was there yeah. until it started recording it, and that could be who knows how long. Yeah, we don't lose connection all that often, right? That's, yeah, sorry, I can't believe you said that, man. I'll be out for the rest of the day. <laughs> I knocked on wood. <laughs> Laminated wood products. Thanks a lot. But that would be that would be a universal issue. That wouldn't just be. I mean, that'd be any camera, any SD card, any anything. Yeah, and it, like it is a concern that. that I would want to make sure that we're very careful on the config if we went that route. Because if we're not, then we gotta just not have SD cards at all, and just just avoid the you know, we lose connectivity, we lose the footage. Potentially. I mean, yeah, that's that's a different conversation. Sorry, dude. That's okay. When you guys get in though, in um, opening the conversation with the the PD who covers the campus here. Uh, invite me in for those conversations that can really help facilitate and, and make everyone aware of what all of those possibilities are. Um, but it's a great conversation. That's probably the, the biggest usefulness you'll get out of um, having the ability to share this with local law enforcement. Okay, skip, skip, skip. Okay, I'm gonna exit out of this and pass it over to Ryan here. And then we'll jump Sounds into the Jump into the demo on the video side. Again, if you have any questions or whatever, just interrupt, jump in. Okay. I'm gonna share my screen here, and Jake let me know that that's all working and everybody can see it. Looks good to me. That works off way earlier. Cool. Okay, so how many people in the audience were in the access control? Everybody. Everybody, okay. So I don't need to go over the basic basics. Um, we'll just kind of jump into the video since a lot of this is kind of repetitive. Okay, so brought into the main page here with all the tasks. This time we're going to open a monitoring task. Okay. 
So just as we saw when we were doing the access control, the same monitoring task, it looks the same. Um, so we have the entities on the left. We can sort these. In this case, uh, we can do a high school, we can do a middle school, we can have the district as a whole. Um, so you can group all these entities, the cameras, the doors, the intercoms, the inputs, all these triggers throughout the campus or the, the district, you can have those sorted by however you would like. In this case, I'm doing it by school. In the center, we have our tiles. This is where we can bring our cameras in. And on the right hand side is our widgets so we can control these just like we did in access control. We get these same controls when we choose a camera. So for the cameras, we get the forward, the back, the pause. We can go to live video and the like. So these are more like our VCR controls for those that remember VCRs. At the top, we have our events, and these will also show events that happened um, with the cameras. Now, this is all configurable, so we can choose to not see some of the motion start, motion end, that happens all day long. We don't want to be inundated with a ton of events. So these can be configured to, to uh, filter out those, those events, so keep that in mind up above. We can also just clear everything so we get a fresh look. Now these events are stored. We can always pull reports to, to pull those events back in and, and look at them in a report style. So just by clearing the events doesn't doesn't nuke them forever. Uh, they're they're stored in the database. We just go and retrieve them through reports. Some other things inside this tile area. We're going to jump right in here into this map. This is probably the coolest part of it all. I went ahead and grabbed. Bean and decided to zoom in on you guys here. And basically I set up the high school and the middle school inside this map. And this gives you a good overall. So if you had, let's say a camera hanging off this building over here, we can click on that and we can see that uh, camera right here on the map. We can see the live, we have controls of that right from the map. So we can pause, we can go back and look at video, we can play that video and um, see what's going on in, in either real time or from the recording. So Ryan, that's from the map? You're monitoring the map? Correct. Okay. So this is, uh, we're actually using Bean for this map, that way we get a nice pretty overview. Sure. And I'm just doing this right here out of this map. So if you want to drill into a school, so we'll go into, let's say, the middle school. So now we can choose another map so you're not just looking at the campus. Now we're actually getting down inside and we can see within the actual location, in this case, the, the middle school. And we have cameras within just like we did on the other map. So we can pull these up and we can see the particular camera, same controls. We also have the doors, we have intercoms, so we can see the intercom. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit this one. So this kind of ties in the Sapelia part. We get the phone call coming in, somebody at the door. We have a camera that can also see that, the inside of the door, and I'm gonna go ahead and answer this. And there we are, hi, hi. <laughs> And you can open that door from here. Just like we saw, we get the, the door unlocked. We're done talking, we let them in. We end the call. All the events happen on the screen like we saw in Access Control. We got the door unlocked there. So you get a lot of that data just from this map. Now we want to go back to the main. Oh, my link might be. Like my link broke. I was messing with the map earlier. I got excited and threw a little little logo up there. So we'll go ahead and go back to here. So we're going to go over to the high school. Same thing. We get see the link works here. We get the same floor plan. We get all the 
cameras in here. One of them I'm gonna focus on, and we're gonna pretend that this is a IT storage room here. We have a camera on the outside and a camera on the inside. Camera on the outside, kind of looking at a hallway, or AKA my place. And then we have one on the inside, looking at a storage room. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna show you guys uh, an investigation on an incident. And from here, I'm going to choose the IT storage. So we can double click this, we get the full screen. We get the same controls we had everywhere else. So this, you'll always see these same controls. So no matter where you're at, you're still comfortable and familiar with the same operation. You don't have to learn something new in a different place. So here in this case, um, I got a report from the IT folks that there is a missing box in the storage room. So since we know roughly what kind of happened, we're gonna go ahead and take a look on our timeline here at the bottom. White is showing continuous recording. And black means it's not recording. And then green is showing motion. So you get a quick visual of where the cam what the camera was doing at that time, whether it was recording continuously, whether it was not recording, and whether you actually got motion. So in this case, we know that it happened sometime between 2 and 2.30. So I'm going to grab a chunk of video here. I can right click on a section of the video and create these handlebars. These will this will play the recorded video between those it'll loop back through itself on how and you can adjust these these handles to extend or kind of contract the time in which you're looking but instead of going through this and watching 30 minutes of video like we had to do back in the day we're going to use some some analytics to kind of narrow us down so we don't have to spend as much time. So I'm gonna use a function here called quick search. It's gonna go through and kind of load up this quick search and it's gonna say, hey, okay, where do you wanna look within this image? And I'm gonna say it's this UPS box right here. So I'm gonna highlight that and I'm gonna click start. It's gonna go through the video and it's gonna determine when that picked up motion and saw that there was something going on. And so as I start to zoom in with the magnifying glass, you're gonna notice that the time, so now we're at 2.11, the box is there, 2.14, it's not. I'm gonna go in again, we're kind of drilling in, now it's 2.11 to 2.11. I think we're pretty close at half. I'd imagine probably happened within this minute. So I'm gonna choose this one here. It's gonna grab that video. And start playing it. You might put it in a different screen. Take that down to minimize that video. So that's where it was moved. And now I'm gonna pause it for a second and go back. Because I actually, because we know that it was taken right here, I'm gonna go ahead and right click on here. I'm gonna say investigate, or sorry, start incident recording. So now this security desk is going to record as we're moving through this incident. And I'll show you what that looks like. So we're gonna start that. We're gonna play and see where the box is removed. And when we talk about visual tracking, I can click on this here and now I'm moving to a, another camera where it shows this guy taking that box out. And now that we've determined who it was and what happened, we can go ahead and right click, stop instant recording. 
So now we have this report we can work with. And we're gonna give it a title. Yes, missing. And we can give some more description. It's got the incident time down below. And we also have our video sequences. So we have the first camera from 211 and 33 seconds to 211 and 44 seconds, 11 seconds long. And then the next camera. Sorry. Sorry. 13 seconds. And so we now have these two in sequence. I know there was a question that came up in some of the notes about protect video from deletion. And what we can do is we can do that from right here in the incident and it will protect this video from being deleted off the recorder. Off the recorder. So this is different than exporting it. We're just saying keep Correct. it in place and we normally have three weeks of recording, but this one clip we need to keep it for at least a month. Yeah. So it's just, Until either something can be done with it, maybe it's going to be investigation, it takes longer than your retention period, at least it gets to stay on the recorder and, it's, and it gets marked, um, do not delete. At this point, we say, hey, this is all good, we've caught that guy red-handed, now we want to export the sequences. So then we can just click this, and right from the same instant, we can choose our file name, the file format. G64 is the Genetech file format. It's, it will um, also embed the client with it, and then we also get our standard ASF and MP4. We can give it some more description, and then we can go ahead and export. So up here, it says that it's exported, and if it's finished, it puts it in a vault. A vault is a location on this workstation where all this video is stored, so you can go back later and grab that video and whether it's an instant or other recorded video and you can save that to a thumb drive or into a CD, uh, I think you can have, yeah, and then um, you can send that off to whoever needs it. If you do choose the, um, the G64, then it will supply um, the proper software to play the video back to whoever you give it to so they don't have to have security desk or security center installed in order to view that. It's also an executable, so they don't need local admin rights to install anything. They just open it and view it. It doesn't install on their laptop. You can also choose export to clearance in the cloud, if assuming you got clearance running. So that was an instance, so that allows us to um, kind of track that visual tracking um, is super helpful in that scenario. And we can do that live, kind of like what he was saying. So if we just want to switch between the cameras, we can do that. This one's still, I'm going to go back to live. So yeah, we can just switch back and forth. So if you're following somebody around, it's just this simple. And these uh, boxes that you create that are clickable, they can be various different sizes and colors and opacity so it doesn't get in the way. I just make them nice and bold so we know exactly where they're at. And that's a setting, Ryan, like for me, you know, like if I'm monitoring stuff, I can set those things up to look at different events. Um, they're not going to be visible to, let's say, an administrative secretary at a building. She's not going to have the same thing set up, so she, she won't see that, will she? Or is that, is that universal to the system? I believe it's universal. Correct me if I'm wrong. It's universal, but it's permission based, so you can take it away from there. Okay, so if I set that up to go to that next door, the, so if we're tracking it from one camera to the next camera, and I've got a, like what, what he's got here is a blue circle, clicks on that, that would take her to the next camera if I allowed it. No. Okay. No, if you were looking at it, you're going to do that visual tracking. All of these streams are coming in, right. and they're all staying where they are. Right. You're just viewing it differently. Okay. So hers would look different. Okay. So if she wanted to set stuff up, if we gave her the ability to set up tracking and so she could go from one camera to the next. Well, night. you set it up once, everyone has access to those trackings. Okay, 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 cool, thank you. Good. And did we talk about the export, the watermark? Um, we did, just briefly. So when you export it, you're gonna just choose whether it's, one, you have to choose export in G64, G64X. Those are the only protected options that you have. Once it's exported in that format, even if it goes elsewhere, you can only view it within our player. 
In order to convert it back to, a G, to an MPEG-4, you'd have to bring it back into our software and then convert it out to a standard. Because it's protected, you won't be able to use any kind of third-party um, you know, manipulating tools to convert it. Yeah. We also have one more ability. So if we're down here in the video and I decide to choose this section here, then I can also bookmark and I can say, hey, this was an incident, or you know, I want to um, protect this from non-deletion. That's the other form where we can also protect from delete, also from within the incident. We also get it in bookmarks. And bookmark, bookmarks just allow you to place, just like it says, a bookmark right on the timeline and saves it within the archiver. You can choose indefinitely. You can actually put it at a limit on days, so if you want to bookmark and protect this from deletion for X amount of days, you can do that or until an actual date. You can modify those start and end times as well. And then you can just say protect. And then choose the, ex choose the export real quick, Ryan. Uh-huh, yep. So let me grab a chunk of video here. It's actually gonna, let me, let me actually, let me do something really quick because I, it's actually happening right on my screen. Let me step up here and grab this. This is going to be kind of cool. So I have privacy protection set up on this camera. If I walk over here live, that's obscured. You look like Minecraft. <laughs> <laughs> so, and this is running in real time. So if I stand here long enough, I've tried to do this and I cannot um, move. So if I stand here long enough, it doesn't see motion. It'll go back to normal. But this thing is, I mean, as still as I can be, I cannot get this thing to clear. But if you notice, as soon as I move away, it's back. So it's pretty intelligent as far as privacy protection goes. So okay. let's say I have the video right here. Let's zoom in. So there's our motion. It's green. So I'm going to choose this section here. There I am. So this privacy protection is permission based. So if you have, let's say, a supervisor or somebody that has a higher level permission, they can lift this mask for review. So if it's, a, if it's an incident that requires um, a little more investigation and we need to see exactly what happened, then someone with an elevated permission can remove that mask and, and see what happened underneath. You can also adjust the amount of that um, redaction so that you can make them a little bit more identifiable, like potentially tell if it's a woman or a man, so it's a little bit easier. And then you can adjust those sensitivity settings too. Like we saw a space come through in a few of those times, and so I would say you know, heighten up the sensitivity a little bit, and it'll, mm -hmm. it'll control something like that. Hey, before we go too far, Ryan, I wanna go right back to export real quick. If you just mm -hmm. click on the export, I just wanted to show that one piece of, um, just from one file, the, um, the um, the watermarking. So maybe under the advanced settings. Mm -hmm. uh, Add privacy protection. No, not that one. There's another one for exporting it with the watermarks. Uh, I don't know, maybe they just included it from now on. Maybe, but there's the, definitely the watermarks there to, to finalize your I question. Remember seeing, I think I remember seeing it. It's it yeah. been a while. I was just curious how easy it was to do that. Yeah, it might be included with all of them now. But what that really means is you're going to be able to, it's fully admissible in court, right? We can play to a jury. This has not been tampered with. Prove to them that it's original video. And that's acquired through that, uh, through the watermark. So, good? Go. Go. All right. Sorry about that, Ryan. Oh, no, no, that's great. Uh, it's, a, it's a good topic, and um, I'm still kind of learning the watermark. I did a little bit of research on it last night, um, so it's something that I definitely want to get um, absolutely familiar with. So um, I have that as an action item for me. So, um, so this video is already privacy protection. We have it set up on this camera. Um, so if we wanted to export, which we have an export button here, I can choose to export or I can export from all tiles. So if I for, wanted the tracking or I know that these cameras are the cameras where somebody was walking through and I wanna export, I can export from all tiles or just the one that we have selected. 
So one other point I wanted to bring up about the privacy protection, because I think this is um, a pretty important one and it's seldom not understood is when we have video, pause that, I'm gonna go back live, I'm gonna grab this employee entrance. When I had some good people earlier. So in a case where we have the cameras not doing privacy protection as people walk through, when you go to export this video and it has faces and people moving through, under advanced settings, we can turn on that add privacy protection. And then we can go ahead and export that. too much time. Okay, so it's done. We're going to open the vault. Here's our latest one on top. I'm going to go ahead and double click on that. And if we get our lovely subjects to stop on through. going to automatically apply that privacy protection using those settings that Jake was talking about earlier, how you can kind of um, choose the pixelization, the sensitivity, and, and uh, the, the delay, how long it's going to wait until the motion's left. So that is always something you can do after the fact, and that is a selectable option within the software. That's cool. I didn't know that. That's new. So you, just uh, apply, yeah. you just apply that. It's not normally on. Is yeah. you share it? That's new. Yeah. I thought it was um, incredible. I've always done it the other way and kind of ahead of the fact, set it on the cameras, but a lot of times we just want to see a normal camera, but yet we realize that if something happened that might be sensitive, we can apply that to the video. So now that it's exported, that is on there. That's part of the exported video. And kind of what Jake was saying earlier, if we didn't want that, we would have to go back to the security desk, find that section of video again, and re-export without the privacy protection. What else is important to you guys? I want to cover where you guys really have your interests. What's, you want to ask about redaction, right? Kirby? Like, I'm more worried about the blurring, so that was really helpful to mm -hmm. see, and that's the upgrade we just took, which is good. Mm -hmm. Um. So, no, so how, do, how would that work though? I mean, if we just did that, if that privacy protection's on there. So your example of, you know, kids, two kids getting a fight, you want to blur out everybody else around them, but you don't want the blur, you don't, you don't want the two blurred out. Right. So can we- Can that be selective on certain people? Certain spots? Yeah, permission-based. No, no, they're asking them, like, they, they yeah. want two people, and they want the two fighters to be non-redacted and the whole crowd to be redacted. So the only way to do that, we have a tool within clearance is our cloud-based sharing piece. And so that tool is built there. So if you upload it there, you can edit and you can either tell it, do this automatically for this, or you can do it manually and say, okay, do this frame by frame by frame by frame, and then adjust a little bit frame by frame. So you can manually do it too. So it's very, very precise. Generally automatically is gonna get you close enough. Okay. Um, is clearance, provided with the school bundle that we're talking about? That one is not. It's gonna be one of the only add-ons that I'm gonna recommend for you guys. But it also manages your body wearable video, so you just dock it and it uploads to the cloud. If you export video to the cloud because you need to share it with a parent or a police or DA or whoever it might be, you just then send an email. So you don't, it's really handy for, for doing that so that you can, um, do you guys get FOIA requests out of school? That's what, honestly, what triggered Jeff to call about this latest upgrade to added the blurring is um, a FERPA request for a video. FERPA or FOIA? FERPA. 
Fruit bump. What is that one? The Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act. So uh -huh. as soon as we use a video in a disciplinary setting, it becomes part of the student's educational record and the parent can request access to any record in their student's educational record. Hmm. Our problem is that it's not just that one student's educational record, it's a different student's educational record. And so sharing that video without blurring that face is violating the other kid's privacy because if we discipline that kid, it is their educational record. So actually it changes the, the context basically of the footage. And so we end up with core, we don't call them FOIA because it's Colorado Open Records Act. So it's a core request. Um, we do those all the time, like in our parking lots, someone gets an offender better the insurance company wants to see it or whatever. Like as long as people aren't identifiable, our cameras are up high and they're looking straight down or it's just two cars hitting each other, we'll hand that out all day. But if a kid was disciplined, it is an educational record and it, like even though it came off the same camera. Mm -hmm. um, and at that point, we have to treat it differently because we have different privacy concerns. Okay, sounds good. Um, so that, I mean, that's really easy. You're gonna upload the video, do your redaction, and then you just input their email address and click send. You'll define, is this, are they gonna have read access, edit access, can they download it? If they take any of those actions, you have the audit trail, so you can go back and see whatever happened to this video, who accessed it, who opened it, and so on. Um, <clears throat> then sharing it becomes very easy, and you can share it with literally thousands of people. Just by inputting their email address, they'll get um, an email to click on, whichever action you want them to do, and you can ask them, contribute. Up, you're gonna be an uploader, so you've got video evidence on your phone, I want you to upload it, but you don't have access to any of this stuff. You won't see anything about the case. You're just gonna contribute and that's it. Um, is that an annual <clears throat> license? It is, so it's cloud-based and you'll get um, 100 cases per month and that it never goes away. And is there a maximum size of file upload or footage on those cases? Versus um, 100 distinct I, cases? I'll have to double check, but I, I seriously doubt you guys will, will be close to it. Like, we run into the issue when we get you know 150 or 500 sworn officers on a system. Then it gets hard, but I can't imagine you guys really have more than a few people using it, and that many events. I don't think I think 100 cases can be way more than you need, and that's a minimum. Okay. Okay. Hey, uh, Ryan, do you have clearance running? Are you able to show that? I don't. Okay. Let me see if I do on my Okay, so when the cases come in, we'll have, um, we'll just create a new case here. We can have the ability to have, do you have a record management system at the school? Or do you utilize the police's record management system exclusively? What do you mean by? Um, so they'll have, they'll have what's just known as an RMS, record management system. So it has their case ID numbers and it's just an organization of cases and like their documents and files and whatnot? We don't you really have anything like that. Okay. When, when school districts have campus PD, then they, then they do. So I didn't know necessarily, but if police tell you, hey, there is, there is a case number here, you can input it manually there, uh, along with um, the presets we'll create for the incidents. So you have a lot that occur all the time, so you can just select one instead of inputting it every time um, and then assign it to those. Uh, different categories and departments. So we would upload the files here, and when it gets uploaded, then you have the, um, the tools come into play for uh, redacting it. So let me see if I can pull one up here real quick um, that I have already created. Video editor. Yep. Hmm.
perfect. So I've got some picture, picture. Oh, no video. Gosh darn it. Tyler, any chance you have it running? Telling you it's really cool. <laughs> I'll, sh I'll show you shortly when we get some video um, up. But it's a very useful tool. It's got the redaction built right within. We'll show that shortly. Um, what other what other points are important to you guys? Oh, thanks. Well, there's a, I mean, I haven't been for the no one. Yeah, I've probably been using it a little bit. So you know the the event tracking. So you want to see what that would look like, you know, and I think we just saw with that box as an example, you know, but following somebody, the camera sequence thing, I think is something that might be worth, you know, showing. Um, just kind of talking about how we can, how we can track somebody from one to the next. You know. The visual tracking? Mm -hmm. yeah. Do you guys have any questions on that? More questions? Visual tracking? Do you want to see it again? That makes sense to me, okay. like the... Just make it to, yeah, recording the, recording the box, going from camera to camera to camera, mm -hmm. the visual tracking, it makes it very easy to, to track someone through the facility. And again, it's in recording, so if you're like, well, the guy came last night at 10 p.m. and he pulled in through the parking lot here, we start with that camera and then just track him from camera to camera until he leaves. Can we similarly track cars the same way? Oh yeah, anything. Okay. Yeah, even just curiosity, just go from one camera to the next. What about searching? Say someone calls and says there's a guy wearing blue jeans and a red shirt, looks suspicious. Can can we search all cameras for blue jeans and red shirt? Yes. Well, all cameras, supporting cameras. Um, so there's two ways. Yeah, I guess we can we can uh, skin that cat. Go ahead and take um, sharing control again, Ryan or Tyler. Um, <clears throat> Thanks. Yeah, I was going to get analytics next. You know, see what we do there. So. so there is one task here. So Axis cameras, we stick there with Axis. They've got a new utility built into their newer cameras that does these analytics built within. And so we have control of those. And it's very handy. I mean, it's like looking for male or female, red shirt. Um, there's a similarity. So you can say, okay, this guy who's got a backpack on riding a skateboard find me more like that this is not the guy but it looks like him right and so it gives you all those results really handy it's on the newer technology the, the access cameras unfortunately so a majority of the older ones aren't going to be powerful enough to support that piece of it now additionally if you want to go um, server based we have plenty of software applications that we can bring in that, that do that um, it's a layer on top it's something we'd look at more um, you know, there'll be more design that goes into it, what it's going to take. But the easiest to do is use cameras that run those analytics on the edge, and then we just tap into that. Access being the most powerful from that perspective of show me a red shirt, show me a yellow shirt, that kind of thing. Um, Bosch, Hanwha, um, uh, well, you don't have access cameras, you have Hanwha. Hanwha. Okay, so all of Hanwha's analytics, which have been around for few years they're natively supported within security center there's no licensing there's no charge you'll just configure those analytics within the cameras and then in our software we say what do you want to do with that analytic you want to boost recording when it turns on do you want to notify people whatever it is from an action perspective um, when that analytic is triggered. Like, well. go for it so I, I don't actually have a camera running it right now but to show you kind of the searching capabilities um, this is through the humble tool. So a uh, person, I can check, look for a person, I can look for a face, a vehicle. Uh, I know the difference between a sedan, SUV, a bus, a truck, a motorcycle, a bicycle. I can select the colors of the vehicles. If I'm looking for a person, I can select male uh, with the red top, um, black bottom, or I can omit, omit this portion here if they have a bag or not. And then I can generate a report um, but that's the options just from the, the model I do have that's currently not running, but uh, definitely some search capabilities that can be brought into this. And that metadata is stored along the video, so it'll go back and check however many days or specific.
specific time range or even against a certain set of cameras um, or in a specific area within your system to look for this type of information. You're telling me I can do that right now? Hmm? You're telling me I can do that right now? Uh, 511. So we just upgraded to 511. Boom. Let's do it. Yeah, all you would have to do is add the Hanwha plugin. So when you go into your security desk, you would see a portion here that says Hanwha AI camera report. And what, this is free. We can get we get that off of the the um, the portal, right? Uh, I think we get it off of Hanwha website. Yeah, that might be Hanwha. Hanwha. It is from Hanwha. Yeah. So that AI that you just showed right there for Hanwha, that's a Hanwha. That's a that's a plugin that I add from their site. It, yeah. To to security desk. You got it. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then it taps into those. It works the same way with Bosch and with Axis. Yeah. And yeah. So if you do have any mix, uh, like a couple cameras or Axis, it works the same way. But if we had a mix of cameras, we'd have to search using a couple of different plugins. Uh. Well, you would just search on the camera because it's gonna it's gonna have that ability or not. So, so do we like we have two hundred and something cameras? Two seventy. Let's let's say for fun, there's a hundred at Windsor High. We just know there's a creepy guy walking through that was wearing whatever, but we don't know specifically where. Do I need to go to the specific camera to search? So I need to repeat that a hundred times? No. You just search multiple you cameras. The group. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that's where I'm saying, like, if we bought some Bosch cameras and some Hanwha cameras and some Axis cameras, we, like, there is no unified search for that. We'd have to use oh, for the each models? independent tool for... Oh, uh, that's a good point. Like, Genetech doesn't natively support this. It's just a plug-in searching those cameras. Um... Uh, the plugin makes it native. So that's yeah, but only for that camera brand. For that camera, yeah, for the make. And, okay. and the reason behind that too is the manufacturers all have different ways of coding their metadata. Um, it's not like a, a Bosch, Axis, Hanwha all have the same uh, code behind their, their analytics, right? So that, that's why you would need a different plugin because we're, we're reading um, their metadata data in their format. For now. I bet you we can make a common like red shirt and doesn't have Bosch access, whatever. I'm certain they'll, they'll address that too. Um, but for right now, this is all very new, so it's kind of coming to life as these new technologies are brought to us. I'm certain it'll be fine tuned over time. Right, I'm going to switch back to you. Okay. Um, should we jump into the list? Are we getting short on time? Do you need to see anything else? You got, you got until, we're, we started at 1.30, right? Yeah, we're until yeah. 3.30? Yep. So we've got just 45 minutes. Okay. Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay. Well, I'm going through the list, and so far, I've covered everything there was hardware inventory report um, i was going to grab that i actually did one just a second ago so back here at the main tasks you can choose a hardware inventory report down here under maintenance that'll go through you can choose what type of cameras you want at this point i'm going to just choose video units select all of them and generate a report. And these are the ones, some of these are offline and they are federated cameras. So um, they're not gonna show up here. Just the ones that I have local here. And then we get to see all the information about those all in one spot. Also, some questions regarding does your system integrate with emergency alert systems? Do you want to touch on that one? Just what we're looking for there? Yeah. 
Yeah, so what, we're, what we want to do, so we, uh, the RFIs that we've done in, in succession are going to go door access, which we did last week, video today, and then PA emergency alert next week. So what we're looking for is, you know, at Solution where, uh, you know, an administrative secretary or somebody's got a button on their desk and they push a button and X happens. So we lock down the doors, record camera stuff, send out a, a broadcast, um, you know, whatever uh, pre-programmed to that system. We're just curious about the tie-in to those public address systems, emergency alert systems. Uh, again, we're, we're doing that RFI next week. So just today we don't have it. Today we have, you know, one system that is isolated as a PA system. We have an emergency, a fire, or whatever the case is. They push that button. Then they go push a button on a wall that does tie into Genetech. So we, we do lock the exterior doors, so that works. We're just wondering the operability between the two, if, 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 that, if that can happen. Absolutely, yeah. And you really want it to. I mean, it's very important because, you know, our system is going to do a lot more than just that audio system, what it's going to do its specific purpose, right? So when we build that into security center, it's just going to become another component that will have another tool within this big toolbox. Um, so whether it's the audio and we're controlling it or just being recipients of it, when that bus button gets pushed, it should really be firing off multiple things to happen. And I would assume that you'll go to security center and then trigger that PA system because it can then make decisions on which message are we sending out depending right. on what kind of type of priority. 100%. Yeah, 100%. The, the PA, right now the alert system is programmed to where, I, I don't know, Trevor, how many is there, five or something like that? Five different events that we can do. Yeah. And, and you, you trigger that and then it, there's a pre-recorded, you know, different <coughs> things that are, are supposed to alert across the, that particular building. Mm -hmm. Then, you know, like I said, for us, we're, we're having to push a button, you know, that's in every school now. But you push that button and then that locks the doors or whatever. Mm -hmm. So the ability to tie that together would be great. Mm -hmm. um, and then I guess another question would be is we have, you know, with our SROs and, and walkie talkies and things that they've got on them, is there a way to, hey, door got propped open, can we send a message? I know we can send an email, you know, we have different alerts that we can send. Can we send something to like a walkie talkie or mobile app or, or how, does, how does that work? Uh, the walkie talkies are a little difficult. I mean, it's, it's it depends on what you have. If we can send if we can send messages to it that it can convert to send over that radio signal, yeah, absolutely. Um, but that would just be dependent on those walkie talkies. Sure. Um, DJ. Yep. For the radio thing, we actually have a plugin that works with any radio right now that will uh, alert. So any alarm in the system will it'll broadcast a pre-canned message on the radio. And that works with any buddies. Anybody's radios. All we need is, a, is one of your radios to be plugged into. Okay. So, so, so Tyler, where does that where does that plug in? Explain that to me. So you just need that. Um, you, it, go ahead. Yeah. All, all you need, all we do is we take a radio and we add a plug-in into the software. The plug-in uh, identifies alarms that you established within the Genetech system, and if one of those alarms are received, uh, what it'll do is it'll play a pre-canned message. Uh, it can either be a repeated message sure. until the alarm is cleared. So every 30 seconds, it comes across the radio, alert, um, prop door, or door held open, front lobby. Uh, and when the alarm is cleared, that alert will go away. Uh, it is non-specific to the brand of radio, so it doesn't care if you use Motorola or Kenwood, PYT, whatever the case may be. Uh, it's because we actually take a physical radio and connect that into a box to allow us to, to broadcast that message. Okay. So. And how long? When did you guys get that? Uh, we've had it for a little bit. It's just become more. Um, maybe within the last year, it's become more known. Okay. Um, and it, it looks. I'm going to turn on the camera for a second. It looks like this. You can see the radio in my hand connected to a wire. I see it. Which is connected to a, a microphone port and radio, uh, and it just plays the alert through the radio. Now in this case, this is a motor radio, but it works with other brands as well. So you just need the one physical radio to be able to put the, 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 the plug-in in and we're, and, and we're rocking. How do you plug it in? Is it plugged in the network? How do you... Uh, they, they have a little box. Um, the, the, the manufacturer of the plug-in um, has a little box. Uh, and they the box plugs into the radio. They just need to know what type of radio. Uh, and then they build the connector within the box. Uh, and it stays charged. It's one radio per channel. Is this, um, this is an add-on? Yeah, that's a tech partner. Um, 
um, a fairly new tech partner. We started doing it with the casino side down here in Vegas. Okay. Um, they're going to a dispatch a less system. So. Sounds like that's important though, Jeff. It's here's what's important. It, the the idea that we can, because we have a new director of safety and security, you know, that'll be starting up in in July. Um, but we're not sure exactly what he's going to be looking for. But the idea, you know, from my seat, the idea to tie all these systems in together to be able to do things together is is advantageous. Mm -hmm. You know, like I said today, we have an AMX system, you know, a PA system where we we hit go and it'll, you know, we have the pre pre canned messages of, of what that alert is going to be, and then we have to hit a separate button to do, um, you know, the, our lockdown. You know, and so we we want to. We want to at least explore the idea of, of just a single thing that, that does all the things that we needed to do. Okay. So hit, hit this button and it says this message and it locks these doors and you know, so it alerts our SROs and does all those things. So yep. You're going to get that. I'm just curious about the radio piece. The, the whole execution of that plan, that's what threat level management is. And so one differentiator there too is you're going to get um, from any other system, you're going to get those outputs, they show you how to do that. And threat level management, we change all of the settings within Security Center. And that's a huge difference, right, between the two, because you'll have ultimate control of changing it to say, this is not normal behavior, we're gonna do something that's very extreme with the system. Um, the radios, that's a, you know that's that's something we'll have to I look in closer, but I, it sounds like there's um, an integration with a company called Lynx um, that provides that. So I'll get more clarification on that piece. Sure. But on, on your evaluations next week, um, like I mentioned, it's really important to ask that qualifier, do you guys support the open architecture protocol? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So as long as they do that, you'll be able to, you'll have full control within our system. Right. If it's proprietary, it's likely not going to work. And so we're proprietary. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think. Uh, Trevor, anything you want to add on that? And I want you to be able to see the threat level stuff that's been shown to me. I, I need I need a, a more thorough demo on it for sure. But the threat level stuff and everything, I know that that'd be something good for you to see. Let's do the setup of it. You want to see the configuration? Yeah. Makes yeah. it it's really easy. Okay, let's go ahead and do a creation of a new threat level. Ryan, give me a scenario. What do you guys want to do it for? You pick one, Trevor. Are you talking including like the trigger, like what? Uh, no, like what? What's our event? You want to do like a snow day, a tornado, an active shooter? Yeah, let's let's talk active shooter, okay. and then we're gonna go into a um, lockdown. Okay, active shooter lockdown with um, sending video to just another user. Normally, we'd say through Federation to the PD. Yeah. Um, we want to boost the recording quality and. Uh, Disable a card holder. So you can see all these lists here. This is all the out of the box stuff that's available for us. Can I put a zoom on this? It's not my teams though. Uh, That's at least a little better. Set reader mode. So, if you need, if you want me to run through these, run a pattern, send a message, send an email, send a task, um, set the door maintenance mode, silence it, shunt it, sound a buzzer, apply protection, automatically we can do that, apply video protection. So we're in an active gun shooter situation. We want all this video, don't, don't let this get deleted. So all the video during this threat level is now gonna be protected on the servers. No chance of losing it. Trigger an alarm, trigger an intrusion alarm or output, unlock or lock a perimeter, those doors. All of these are, yep. go ahead. Sorry. So these are all just out of the box options that we'll have available to us. Um, and we can, we can actually customize them um, a little further in some of the details of those actions that we can take. The point being, We've got a whole slew, really anything you can do within the software, you can automate that process through threat level management. Yeah, so in the lockdown, I'm actually changing the security clearance uh, for the system, which can stop particular people from using. So in this case, Clark, who would normally have access 
is not there tonight at that front door because we're in a lockdown. But yet I have Octavia, who is a security or an SRO within the system, and they still need to be able to move throughout during that situation. And then if we clear that lockdown, either through the threat level itself, or I have a hot action right here on top that just says threat reset, and it basically does that same thing I did before. You just have it in that area. So now that I've gone out of the lockdown, this door that was normally in a unlocked schedule is now returned. And now Clark has the ability to get back through that door. And that's all done just either through a button on the lockdown, the pendants like Jake was mentioning earlier, you can initiate it directly from here. Let's say we have an evacuation. This is more so just of a notification. So if we did want to tie this into a, a PA or mass notification, at least you're not you're not locking doors, doors still remain unlocked. We can actually set all the doors to unlock. That way nobody is having to worry about doors. They can just exit. Um, so there's a lot of configuration and it's not just threats. We can use these, like you were saying, for snow day. If you want to change the behavior of the system based on one event, that's where this threat management really comes into play. Make a broadcast out over the loudspeaker so everyone can hear every 30 seconds it plays a clip that says, it's snow day, go home. <laughs> <laughs> right, or, or let's say it's a game day and you want to have just an event that happens on on a on a game day in the evening you can have um, particular like the part of most of the school locked down but the gymnasium opens up um, the, the gate that is usually stopping people from parking in particular parking lots you can have those unlock and open so that there's free flow of traffic so it's this is kind of like a, an event to action on steroids but it gives it um, a lot more um, management i guess in this respect does that make sense? Do you have any, any questions on it? Any any scenarios you'd want to be curious if it's going to work? So uh, it's interesting. What's interesting to me is so I haven't, I haven't used the system like that because that threat level is the threat. It seems like threat, but it's really just an event thing. Yeah, so it's, think a, about, it's a bad name. Think about like a swim meet. So if we did something like that for you. You know, and you wanted to schedule instead of just scheduling that, we can do do a schedule and just unlock the doors. But we could do I could do a whole slew of things. This is going to happen from this time to this time. We want to record this area, you know, because we're going to have activity in that. We could do all that stuff. I've just never done it. Right. But that's that's programmable today. I mean, that's totally. that, that's something I could you know I just never have. It's just we just do the door unlock schedule for the different events that we've got. And that's I, I can do it all day. Yeah. But to tie all the other components or potential components in. One, one common one that I always hear is that they, like the basketball coach, will have all the students surprisingly show up, hey, everyone come here on Saturday morning at 10 a.m. We're going to do drills because you guys need to get caught up before. It. Doesn't plan it with anybody, gets there, doors are locked, he calls somebody. So in this case, you could enable, you know, gym teacher doing his normal thing. Just right. click that one button and it's going to unlock the gym, turn on the lights, you know, unlock the door for an hour, whatever the rules are that you assign to it. So you get those kind of, you know, whole rules put in place. <laughs> yeah. yeah, if you have an intrusion system that's normally armed at that time, you can disarm that intrusion system so that it's disarmed during that, during that event. And then when you return the system back to normal, you just have the deactivate section choose to um, arm it. So it's pretty flexible, ties into the whole, a lot of the plugins and also that that you can bring like intrusion another thing you can do too is um, either a double swipe or triple swipe mm -hmm. on a reader that will activate this too so you don't really need to you just have to know that no, I can, but I can program that I mean that's great I mean I've, that, I've, I've been able to do that so. yeah so I mean you just set up the threat level and then one of those events that would trigger this would be that double swipe piece of relief we go into this is all the management you know and rolling the cameras and how we can manipulate all of those 
When we do a direct integration to these cameras, we really pride ourselves on doing the deepest level of integration to our partners' cameras that possible. And so we've been Axis's number one development partner for a number of years, and they have more than 1,700 development partners. Kind of just speaks volumes to how, how we do these integrations. So I don't think we really need to go into that unless you guys have any concerns, but I can assure you these, these integrations are. Do you have a good feel for availability going forward? I think we had in our last project spec access cameras and the between cost and availability, the vendor reseller basically asked for permission to sub Hanwha in. Um, and you mentioned access a couple times today. Out of habit, sorry. Yeah, I kept, kept thinking you had access. I just try and do what the customer has, and I, I got confused. So. Supply chain is you know wonky. Would you recommend, given our install base, that we would stay with Hanwha? Um, or would you say, given that we're looking at so much new, and a lot of our Hanwha cameras are starting to become three, four, five years old at least, mm -hmm. would you steer us towards a different... I, all I can really say is our three top partners are Axis, Hanwha, and Bosch. So there's no debating the fact that Genetech and Axis have the best integration available. However, Hanwha and Bosch are like a, such a close second and third. I mean, they're just right there with it, right? So you'd have to take a personal preference along with the cost benefit analysis, along with the features, and along with availability, right? I mean, I've really heard through the industry that the supply issues are quickly coming under control. So by the time this rolls out, it might not be an issue. Um, but I'd really say that you don't have much concern. Like I would kind of, like why, why not mix and match it, you know? And it's kind of, kind of safer in that, that realm anyway. And you know, those access search features for the, like the, the color of the shirt and stuff, I mean, it's pretty useful. But to say go away from Hanwha, I mean, you're gonna get a lot of cost reduction from the Hanwha product, right? And really comparable results. So, and it, I mean, it's, it's hard. They're, they're, they're very similar. It's a strong commodity product. If you have concerns, I wouldn't say either one of them are like worse, right? Okay. What else? Is there a desire for visitor management integration? So we use Raptor right now. Okay. I quite honestly don't have a good grasp on understanding like what an integration really does for us. So if someone comes up to a front desk and checks in using Raptor, what does integrating with that system do for us? It would then then create the card holder with their permissions to say access granted. So then you you just input the information in Raptor, creates the visitor management on our side. And then you can give them a card if you want, or just give them a paper badge. But it's a one step process instead of let me scan you for Raptor and then let me take this over to the security desk and make you a visitor. Just come just mix it in one step. Okay, so we print them a badge. What what's the benefit in security desk at that point? Um, you can control their access as well as track it. So because you have video, you can say, oh, well, this parent, what, why did they go? Why did they try and go in the IT room? They got an access denied, and why did they do that? We watch the video and go, oh, well, they're clearly confused, or they're clearly trying to get after something. <laughs> okay. From another standpoint, um, for evacuation purposes, they can also give you a muster report so you know how many people um, with only adults are in the building at any given time. Okay. Good point. And is that integration with Raptor something that exists today? Uh, it's in development right now. Raptor's actually doing it themselves. So the last I checked, they're doing they're developing it for Aspen School District right now. Okay. So they're they're chomping out the bit to get it done. So it's coming. I can check status on it, but it's absolutely in the works, and it was one of their requirements. So it's it's going to be done here shortly. I can send this to you guys too. I didn't know if you wanted maybe to review this, but we can go through the ordering guide and this gives you a really good handle on what's included as a base and what are some of these options that we should be considering, right? 
Um, and I can review everything that we do have included because a lot of the things that are on this list you guys do get. Again, that education um, bundle, you're gonna be super excited to see it, Jeff. It really, it gives you everything that you're like, all these things you've been wanting. Yeah. Yeah. Like mission control, um, like the threat level management, like the failover, um, and so on. So maybe you guys, you guys wanna go through this right now or do you want me to highlight some stuff and give you my recommendation along with this? Maybe I could do that. I could highlight. I could highlight this, send it to you, and you can review what's not highlighted and see if there's anything else you want included on it. Um, I don't know. I'm good either way. Yeah. Um, we've got we've got, uh, we've got time. I, yeah, I I think my biggest intrigue. I understand that there's a package. I don't understand what is included that we do have versus what we don't already have. Mm -hmm. I've got a strong differentiator between the two that's clearly illustrated, but I can do that too. So I'll make, I'll, let me give you a summary of what it looks like. Am I able to email that to you guys right now? Yeah. Or, or, that's okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll tell you everything that's in that education bundle, and then I'll put it on this form and say, you know, here, the, everything that's included. And you'll clearly see it. I'm gonna add a couple things in there like clearance, uh, plug in for Raptor. Um, in so on that, so that's an integration Raptor is working on. Would we pay Genetech for that plugin? Uh yeah, it's just an SDK connection license, so it's a one-time fee of two hundred fifty dollars. Okay. And then, do you know if Raptor is planning on charging above and beyond what we pay them on an annual basis? I would imagine that something similar. Probably not that much, though. Okay. Yeah, that would really be a question for them, though, and they, they do have the full power because it's their integration. Sure. Yeah, what you are going to get is the enterprise, the enterprise um, base product. It'll include Omnicast and Synergies for you. Um, and then, how did these do we get? Office Pro. Plan Manager. The maps get included with their threat level. Active Directory. Sepelia, got the audio, unlimited security desk, mobile and web clients, oh, did we cover evacuation assistant? Was that important to you guys? What was that? Evacuation assistant? Yeah, I didn't think we covered it. Yeah, I presented it to Trinidad the other day. So evacuation assistant really just is what it sounds like, right? This would require a, a reader to go out in parking lots, the remote, wherever you're gonna evacuate to, there's your muster spot. And then you can have your, um, list of students. Everyone's going to be assigned to each classroom, so when the teachers get there, they can badge in. Um, they can manually add, add students if need be, but a lot of times they just have a reader out there, so they can badge to let them know that they've got their okay with their classroom, and if they don't badge in, that it automatically, you know, they're missing students, so they don't badge until they have their full class there. You know, if each student gets a card, then obviously we do it for each student. Come up to the reader, everyone, every student swipes their badge or whatever connection they have. Does that have an integration with the um, SIS so that it knows what kids are present and absent? You definitely could, I mean, absolutely. Yeah, that would be something we need to do on a daily basis. So you take that attendance report 
um, and you'd have to have a database of it, but we can marry those two up to know, um, you know, that they're actually. It, do you know if there's, uh, is there an existing integration with Infinite in Campus or how, how does that work? Is that getting a whole Campus bunch? is a popular one. There might be something that already exists. If there isn't, there's a company that we use for all of those things called Swift Data, and they just have developed this really core um, product that, that satisfies most of the needs of connecting these together. So, and they, they understand all of the systems. If we run into something that's too hard to overcome like that, we can just put in Swift Data. And they're, it's amazing. But I have to imagine we have um, an integration already with Infinite Campus. I'll look into it for you. And what are those badging points like at the muster station? Like, is that some kind of battery powered wireless? Like when you dump a building, the secretary grabs a badge reader and goes out in the middle of the field? Oh, you could do that too, a handheld? Yeah. That's also an option too. What I was talking about is mounting one out there but a handheld will work just fine as well. Yeah, because I was trying to think of Windsor High School, they've got multiple muster points. Yeah. Depending on which part of the building they're located in. But that's totally intriguing. Yeah. Okay. I'm not getting very far on this, so I will just put together a list and makes it a lot more simpler for, for you. Otherwise, I'll make you fall asleep even more. <laughs> Are you guys, um, is there anything else you want to see? Is there anything else outstanding we need to cover? I'm trying to think of our questions. I think that covers it. I, think. I can bring them up if you want to see them. Yeah, just maybe let's just double check it. I, but I think, I think that covered the bulk of it. Sorry, I had to bounce for a little bit. Our radius server reset to hiccup. So any staff device that was currently off the network couldn't reconnect to Lexus. So we had a bunch of teachers who were trying to finish up their day. Came back from a meeting with other staff members and like, I can't connect to Lexus. Okay, yeah. I wonder if what was happening to this one right before we started. Connect, I guess, just fine. Watch this now. Because the uh, Justin at first thought the certificate on the radio server disappeared. He's like, where did it go? I can't see it. He's like, I have no idea. So he bounced the radio server. And we were, people were able to get connected again. Did we talk about vaping? Do you, no, that's do good you integrate one. with Halo? Or Halo. Is it? Yep. So that'll use our IoT plugin. Um, it's a very useful tool too, because once you have that in place, bring in those halo sensors, you're gonna see all the power of what that, that plugin has. Um, so you can tie that into building automation as well. It handles all of the protocols that those types of systems use, um, like SCADA, OPC, ACnet, Modbus. So um, they, they come in through the IoT plugin. Um, they're super handy. Do you guys have them already? No. Oh, they're cool. But I think we need to get some. Yeah. We're starting to have real vaping issues. So. Yeah. Any guesses where the biggest violators are within the schools? I mean, you guys will be able to give us the stats too down the road. Where? But In the bathrooms? Yeah. Bathrooms, pretty close. Male or female? <laughs> Don't, the, the eighth grade female locker rooms. That's the biggest offender. Wow. You know, it's funny you say that because we are rounding in our eighth grade um, bathrooms at our middle school right now. Yeah. Common, huh? It's that age. God, I hated eighth grade. <laughs> <laughs> middle school is just kind of, that's just tough. So those vape detection, the halo will uh, not only do the, the, um, walk in because of the, we're just talking yeah. about eighth grade. Like, oh yeah. 
literally, you guys loved it, huh? they, we're cracking down on bathrooms to the extent that like 20 kids walked out of school in eighth grade yesterday to protest that their bathroom privileges are being restricted. Yeah. We're like, you're going in there and you're doing bad stuff. Like, yeah. So it's these 20 kids right here we need to keep an eye on. <laughs> <laughs> so. That really happened yesterday? Mm, 20 kids walked out. <laughs> 20 so it kids does out of 500 vape, and someone. Vape of both nicotine and THC. It also has an anti-bullying kind of audible sensors within. Um, and uh, and then just air quality, which is very handy too. You know, if it's low oxygen in the air, or too much CO2 or whatever it might be, um, then it can alert on that too, which is a great safety piece of it. Uh, but again, once you enroll that in, it's really just a trigger to us. So we say, what do you want to do when this goes off? Um, it's very helpful to put a camera outside of the restroom. So when it goes off, you can quickly just see, you know, who's going through. And we'll just bookmark the video. So we can either search upon vape alarms or search upon a bookmark. Show me all my vape, you know, anything that's in that category. Um, so full control there, but uh, very useful sensors. Is there any like AI that can go over the past two weeks, we've flagged 20 vape things. And in 18 of those times, this same person was seen walking into the restroom one minute before the vape alarm went off. You bet. So using facial recognition, we can do that. Um, it's, again, that's a pretty heavy add on. You'll pay a significant amount just to have that tech, but super useful, absolutely. And it's it's a capability. You won't have it out of the box, but we can definitely do it. Um, this gunshot detection again. It's either gunshot or also gun uh, detection, uh, whether it's millimeter wave or visual analytics or blasting sensors. Uh, multiple ways to take that in. Hanawa cameras have gunshot detection built within there. Those cameras, so that should be really turned on for all of them. Um, Fully supported on the gunshot detection. Again, you'll, you'll pay extra for those add-ons, whether it's analytics or the $200,000 stanchions that you walk through. Um, but it's absolutely a capability. For inside the schools, I would just suggest starting with shooter detection systems. It's probably the one you'll end up with. Fully supported within our software. And is that only gunshot detection? From shooter detection systems. Yes, that's all they do. Same as shot spotter. Okay. The shot spotter would be overkill here. Um, so we think, do we cover the event tracking? I think that would be. Emergency alert systems. There's something more on that I can read here. Event tracking, tagging door access with video surveillance, redaction alerts, push notifications to security personnel, network requirements, power bandwidth, etc. Questions, does your system integrate with emergency alert systems? Okay. So through the Federation, yeah, we can communicate, we can, we can take in any inputs, we can push out any outputs. We're, we're the mediator there, so they, I mean the answer is going to be yes. We just we'll, we'll get closer to it to understand the ins and outs, um, and the visitor management. Again, we have our visitor management built in. We didn't cover Clear ID. Um, Clear ID is an identity management versus a visitor. So an identity, we're going to really do the background checks. We're going to know everything about this this identity, and they'll have three different um, methods of enrolling into the system. But it also gives you a portal where parents could log in to say, I'm gonna be at the school at this date and time. So it's like pre-register. You could put a, a, a little pedestal that's got a self-check-in kiosk. I just don't, I just don't have any K-12 you know, customers who use it. But there is that advanced feature if ever you wanna tap into something a bit more. It is, a, a, it will be available for you. Um, best practices for survivability in the event of network outage. Again, that would be recording to the SD card. That's your first level of defense. You know, having everything redundant, of course, is, is the, the most fundamental, but in case of the outage, um, the cloud links go in place first, right? Uh, cameras can record their SD cards. These servers can have their protective mechanisms in the recording servers, as well as that directory. 
Um, so we can redirect cameras, we can redirect logins, we can redirect video locally, um, we can have all of our access control events accomplished on the, the cloud link. Um, and the only other thing that will happen is you got a complete power failure within the, the building. You know, and on that case, you'll have the, the doors, if they're fail secure, they're going to stay locked. If they're fail um, safe, then they'll um, be unlocked. But of course, you know, if there's no way of communicating, you know, if there's no power to, the, you know, to anything, then, you know, we're dead in the water. So in that case, it's helpful to have a few cameras, a few doors and stuff on this backup power so that we can maintain general surveillance and have, you know, basic uh, access still controlled. And then the calculations for storage. Um, do we have the, do we know what the recording parameters are gonna be? I, up to, you know, 10 days. We, we, we got out 10 days for policy. Yeah. We're, we're yeah. up to 21. But I mean like a, a 720p camera is much different than a 4K camera. Three pane frames per second versus 30 frames, mm -hmm. you know, the level of compression versus the quality, all of those go in to make it so different that we can say, we can do this all in 50 terabytes or we can do it in five petabytes, mm -hmm. you know, however you want, you know, but how big do you want the quality? So we'll kind of need those parameters, um, you know, I think in most cases, 15 frames per second can be the maximum of what you use. And you can say too, let's record all video at um, you know one frame per second if there's no motion. Boost it up to 15 frames per second when it sees motion. It's always a possibility, and I would like that better than saying don't record if there's no motion, and then do record so that you're you're at least always capturing it in case there's some. You know, the what, what you just said is exactly what we do. Okay. We on all of our cameras that set up, uh, you know, we. We have one frame per second on all cameras because I think we ran into a situation where motion wasn't detected yeah. and we, got, we had nothing. So we turned, we said we can't have that. So we had a camera one frame per second. So we had a constant record and then boost on, on right. motion. And I think we got a 15. Yeah, that was 10 years ago. Yeah. I remember after I learned that, I, I've told every school district I've talked to since. Yeah. <laughs> You're welcome. Thanks, Jeff. <laughs> Appreciate it. So yeah, the calculations will vary widely. We have a calculator though, if you want to toy with it to really mess around and understand it, we can give you that. Um, so you can run yeah. the different scenarios for what you think will be best. And we have those archivers built at every location, you know, and I think that one of the things we, I think we ended up guessing some of it, and I think in, in some spots we're right on, and some I think we have a little bit more than we need, um, especially when you consider a 10 and 21 day uh, window, but you know, Having that dialed in to be a little more accurate would be great, you know. And I think having a better understanding of what we're actually doing, you know, where I think before we were just trying to figure out, you know, what are we doing here, and now ten years later, understanding it helps us to to figure that out. Mm -hmm. The only other piece that I'm going to want to make a recommendation here is the end result, um, paying a little bit more money and get Genetech field engineers to do the final commissioning and setting up fine-tuning of the advanced configurations. Um, that'll just ensure at the end of it, we got everything dialed in perfectly. So it costs a couple extra bucks, but it's white glove service and totally worth its weight in gold. I think that would be something that would have, that would, that would have been not a bad idea. I think the problem is, of course, that we were a little bit here, a little bit there, you know, and so there was no overarching going to be this one huge thing you know it was just adding as we needed to more reactionary than what we're doing now yeah so, you know right. having somebody come in and actually just look over the system would be a pretty good idea yeah we'll put that in for you define a few dollars on that gold source well um <laughs> per school sort of it'll be one system essentially so that's how we would tackle it but you know it's to put it in perspective, is three thousand dollars per day. I would think probably two days would be enough for them okay. to accomplish it. You say one one system? Do you mean like our entire district system? Yeah. Okay. All right. Yep. I'm proud of you with the study. Yeah. It's, it's worth its weight in gold. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, Jake, I can't think of anything else, but I think you know we just went through the questions and. Trevor, unless there's something that jumped out at you. 
Um, Steven had to miss today, but we've recorded this and I think are watching. So if he's got anything to follow up with, I'm sure he will. Yeah. Uh, John, you missed some of it too, but I, we also have the benefit of in it. So you, I think you understand it too. Yeah. But, yeah, you should. If there's any reason you wouldn't move forward with Security Center, now's your time. <laughs> <laughs> now's your time. Speak yes, up. This, this is a good time. Okay. And they should be making final final um, decision on cameras and door access next week. Okay. Are you guys going to do a shootout between the camera yeah. manufacturers? What's that? We we don't allow shootouts. Oh, okay. Are you going to do two, two well, separate so evaluations? Cool system. Bake-off? Yeah. Bake-off. 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 Bake -off. Bake -off. <laughs> <laughs> Miss that one. That's good, though. I'll keep that in mind. Okay. Yeah, I don't know. Sounds good. Well, I've got my few things that I'll send over to you. Now we're adding those, that calculator and going through this ordering guide to simplify it. We'll get that over to you. I think we should be in really good shape. If there's no other questions, I think we can take the other extra seven minutes. <laughs> Grab a donut or something. Or upstairs. They, they all ran upstairs. Yeah. Ryan or Tyler. What's this? Oh. Appreciate it so much. You guys have anything else you need? I forgot that one. Thanks, guys. Uh, okay. Okay. Uh, and uh, it looks like we have been we touched on everything. Um, oh, there was, there was a great number of the So we touched on it and that was the only other thing uh, I had. I that out. Uh, yeah. So yeah, I think we're good. And I appreciate everybody uh, participating. It was, it was a good one. They all stayed awake for you, too. Suffer, <laughs> <laughs> suffer, <for> Jake. <laughs> <laughs> it's a day. All right. Thanks so much, Ryan, Tyler. Appreciate it. Great job. Yeah, good. All right. Thanks, guys. Take care, everybody. You too. Bye bye. You know there's green salsa? <laughs> no. And that's, I was looking for green salsa because like usually bag those, there. those come with green. I looked back and there was a whole bag sitting underneath the table full of salsa. <laughs> I totally would have done it. Where was that? Where were those from? Uh -huh. So, there's a place in Fort Collins that makes one like that. It's called like Almanza's or something. Hmm. And there's there's something it's like that in Creepy too. Um, Body wearables. Like kind of by UNC. Oh, 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 Thirty four. Just give to your officers. Whatever goes guards. up. Yeah. Uh, they're, they're always capturing the library. everything. You can, when something happens, you just push the button right here to flag it, like, put the bookmark yeah. on it so you can find it really easy. Three, stop mm -hmm. recording just right here. Mm -hmm. See, I think we should just have like a part two or something. And then clearance, you just, all you do is you take this off, take this out. There's a little dock, right? It's plugged into the network. I like and then you just stick this in the dock and it uploads to clearance. There's no management, you don't do anything. Like, and they're just so different, and I like Please, they, they have they have a person whose sole job is to manage body wearable video. Wow. You can't do that on teacher's day when you want one in their classroom. I mean, the, if it's a push to go though. Yeah. So this like, this solution is important. is you don't think about it. Just dock it. It charges, uploads. You come back the next day, put it back on. And then when the school buses, when security we comes up for need on the school buses, remember we have a full solution there that is blow your mind cool. It's got all the bells and whistles. It's, it's the neatest solution I think that we offer for transit, cool. for yeah. fleet, fleet management. But I, I feel like we talked to, I mean, this might explain it, but we talked to Interface when we tried to come with Genetech when we outfit the buses and it was, just an insane order of magnitude, more expensive than what we have on our buses. Yes. That like, was not affordable. But I think that was, I think that was before you guys actually had that solution in place. Mm -hmm. We were figuring out a way to make it work, I think, mm -hmm. versus having a solution, because I think that you, uh, and we didn't, you know, yeah. two years after. We didn't have, we didn't have anything. Like we couldn't go after the transit world at all, because we, we 
didn't, we didn't put anything together to go after it. Now we have, and we have a fully baked solution with the AVL plugin and everything that goes with it, but we've also truncated the pricing for education. So now it's like, it's a really viable solution, the coolest solution on the market, yeah. and it's also cost competitive. It's not as cheap as analog, you'll never get a $30 camera, like, you know, the other competitors, that's what they're selling, really junky stuff, and ours is, you know, top tier, like you'd expect, but it certainly is more expensive, but also way easier to manage, you know, over time, I'm certain it's more cost effective just because of the stability. Cool. Right now, I was telling you before, the bus drivers have to hit a button to pretty much bookmark a specific recording. Right. And then they have to let the office know, transportation office, and then somebody from in there has to go out to the bus once the bus comes back, pulls the hard drive, puts a new hard drive in, hooks the hard drive up to their computer to pull the video out. Mm. Is it a whole hard drive? It's not just like an oh, SD card or something? No, it's Hard wow. Oh wow! Manual too. You gotta walk out there. It's uh -huh. freezing, man. I'm not going out there. <laughs> so yeah. Oh, uh, we really nice. You just click on it, and these are live too, so you can see live video what's going on in the buses, and you can talk to them. You can put the, the halo sensors in there, so when they're, they're vaping on the bus, you can get the alerts. Um, you know, the ADL is going to tell you uh, where the bus is, but tapping into all the, the metrics, it's going to alarm, you know, hard braking, hard cornering, whatever it might be. If the bus got in an accident, it'll tell you all that information. You can also take our LPR cameras fixed on the buses when the stop arm goes out and any car goes around it, just capture those plates, work on the local PD, give them the information. You give them the evidence, they write the tickets. Um, what else? It does all kinds of stuff. Cool Who's in charge of the cameras on buses? Uh, Jeff. Is that transportation? Yeah, transport. Or is that Jeff? Not Jeff. So you have um, an operator, a bus operator? Mm. It's just our, they're our employees. Oh, okay, okay. Do you have like a, um, would it be the transportation director or what yeah. that yeah. would fall it's, under him? It was yeah. Nathan Reimer. Okay. But yeah, I mean, what we have in there is relatively new, not as new as the solution you're talking about, but. I'll still talk to him though. I mean, we got new buses that will be coming online. You could eventually swap over. I just want to make sure that he's aware so that, you know, when the time comes, it can be a, a consideration. Yeah, I mean, we would have preferred to swing it that way from the start. So that was a bummer, but it just is what it is. Yeah, it's all purpose built now. We've got hardened appliances for it, with built in switches, and everything that goes into it's really just fine tuned and we put some thought into it. It's a viable solution. As cool as can be. For real. Yeah, so too, we do, do a uh, 360 camera, you know, captures everything, so they can turn it around all night. Right. But it doesn't really matter, too, we've got that built-in um, analytic that is our camera tampering. So if it moves like that, the camera knows and it just sends an alarm, so that video will pop up. Because someone's messing with it, you want to look at it, look at it right away. So the camera tampering alarm goes off and we have it pop up on the screen so you get a quick visual. What's going on? Some who the face. violator was. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. <laughs> That's what it looks wow. like. <laughs> a whole lot of nostril in that video shot. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the ones you just take a clip of it and send it to the parent. This is your, here's your offspring. Right. <laughs> here's the same food. So my, my granddaughter's bus system is through the city. It's do do. Does anywhere in Colorado do that? Like it's not school employees, they're contracted through the city. The there are a lot of places that contract out to just like a company, but I don't know of any that use the municipality. Yeah, I don't know about municipalities, but there's a lot of bus operators, bus operation companies that... This is right outside of DC, so everything there is municipality. Oh, everything there is government in some way. We do have a government guy there if you want to talk to him. 
Are they on my guy there? Mm -hmm. In DC. Yeah. I don't need to talk to anybody there. But I just thought it was interesting. Ah, uh, okay. Interesting and um, not surprising, considering it's there. There is a guy I wouldn't mind talking to there, but I don't know if he'd understand what I was saying. Thanks for your time, Jake. My pleasure. Always good to see you, man. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for your time as well. And if anything comes up, I have a bunch of things to send, so I'll probably just send that to you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. just stay within the yeah, boundaries of the RFP. And he's gonna kind of highlight everything that's in the bundle because right now oh, okay. it's separate. But just for so we can have an understanding of like what's included in that thing, and then there are a couple of add-ons. Like if we want to be able to blur faces, they have a product called Clearance that's an annual fee oh, okay. that like we really would need, and we export the video into that, and then we could blur the faces from there. Mm -hmm. But for us to be able to look at like what we're really we'd be getting into, we we kind of need that whole picture. That's cool. It's cloud based. Yeah, it's called the digital, it digital like evidence it, management. You can put it all into the same file that the so large people's got it. Or if you got like files too, or if you take like a police investigation report, you could upload that to it as well, or a student statement or parents, whatever it might be. Put anything digital in and keep it all together in one case. Mm -hmm. And then if you needed to share it with parents or investigating officers or whatnot, you just send them a link for it from it. So no more thumb drives or email or upload it to Dropbox or you know stuff like that. I want it all in physical printed form. So. <laughs> you can do that too. <laughs> no you don't. Cool. I appreciate your time, Jake. Yeah, absolutely. My pleasure. Good to see you. Yep. All right. Thanks for everything, yeah. memory. Great to yeah. see Always. Yeah. I uploaded the questions from the PDF and then I document the good. answers. Good. Good on the map. Yeah, good. Have a great day today, Jake. Are they, see you, based on what we were talking about, do they help thin or not? Um, <laughs> a little bit because I've heard, not heard from Bogan at all. Okay. So that That's super right there, right the What was your deadline to respond? Um, yeah, I'm not that still the deadline, to tell you the truth. I don't know. Memories, yeah. Was spoken through counter 